All right, so we got the front winch set up, tied down, tightened down all the bolts, and then we're going to go remove the jet ski to uh, install the bolts for the bunks. And I uh, realized that the ski is actually sitting on the, the taller bunks because it comes on the new super jet, it comes down further in the very front. So you can see it made a little bit of mark right there. Luckily that'll, I'll be able to polish that out. But yeah, we'll have to router our bunks in the center here to give us more clearance. So it's just sitting on the rails and not on the center. We won't be able to use our other things, man. All right, so we got the trailer hooked up to the truck, and we finally kind of resolved our issue of rubbing uh, the bunks on the jet ski. So I'll kind of show you what we did, and we went ahead and sunk the bolts flush, or past flush, so those aren't an issue either. And that's what we did on the Kawasaki, because the Kawasaki doesn't sit down as far. And since these skis are going to be in their specific spots, we're not going to be uh, switching the Kawasaki and the Superjet back and forth. So because we wanted it to be perfect and sit perfect for the specific ski that's on there. Since we have a whole different setup for the two strokes that we'll show in a little bit. We got the tongue fully mounted and the two bunks and this bunk mounted. And what we did was I'll show you uh, kind of the bolt hardware setup is we have a long bolt with washers on both sides. And besides the washers, we also put a support bracket on the back, kind of give it an extra strength and looks kind of cool, but mostly to give it extra rigidity and strength for the trailer. So we're not putting less, we're putting less stress on the trailer. And if we were to do this again, since we uh, did run into this issue, what we would do is, what we would have done is just use these two by 12s and just done three of those compared to our two by 12 and four by six for the front. So we would have just done three two by 12s for the, to build the, support the beams for our bunks. So that's what we would have done if we were to do, do it again, since, uh, we weren't used to the four-stroke setup uh, clearance issue. But overall, we're really happy with how uh, this setup came out. And also, depending on the setup too, to avoid uh, clearance with bolts, you could also use L brackets on the outside, kind of like what we, we did with the other trailer um, to support the bunks onto the trailer. And then, for the ski spacing on the bunks, uh, we wanted it to be specific for the specific ski since they are all different. The new Superjet is completely different than the third gen Superjets as well as the Kawasaki. The new Superjet, the on center measurement is 13 inches and the round nose third gen Superjets are 12 inches on center and the Kawasaki SXR 1500, 11 and a half inches. All right, so I wanted to give kind of a better explanation of the on-center measurement since I have gotten several questions about it. So how we found the on-center measurement is by measuring the ski in its proper location that it'll sit best on these bunks. So, and then here's our bunk that we have built. It's a two by, there's our two by sixes on each side and our two by 12 in the center. So to find the on-center measurement, you would go from the center of the left bunk to the center of the right bunk, and then you would draw the line. And then for the new Superjet, we found that 13 inches is the on-center measurement, the proper on-center measurement. 
for the bunks to get the width of this board you would subtract 13 minus one and a half since that's the width of a two by six and we're measuring from the center of each two by six which will give you 11 and a half and that's how you find the width of the board in the center 11 and a half for the new super jet and that's what this board right here in the center is cut to. And this is the two by 12 that's bolted into the trailer. And then I also wanted to touch on what this little black rubber piece or this little black line here is. And this is the rubber. So since it's an aluminum trailer and we're messing with uh, treated lumber, you have to have a barrier between the aluminum and the treated lumber because the treated lumber will react with aluminum and will corrode it over time, but uh, you always have to have a spacing between the treated wood and the aluminum. So that's what we did with ours. Uh, you can't really see it in the video, but there is rubber sheeting underneath the bunk to give it that spacing between the bunks and the trailer. The center wood is 11 and a half. On the old Super Jets, it's 10 and a half. And on the Kawasaki, it's 10. So kind of interesting. And that will give you the perfect spacing. We went with the Triton winch for the front. And we went with these cool boat buckle retractable ratchet straps for the back. Since the back of the ski, the latches are really close. So we couldn't find any regular traditional ratchet straps to attach to the trailer that were short enough to attach to the ski. And there's no hole in the back on the Super Jet for a pin to go through like our setup on the Kawasaki. But this is gonna be pretty sweet when we build skids to pull the ski on at the beach area or wherever we're riding. We're, we always make a, basically a duplicate of this to pull the skis onto when we're at the beach area or just pull, instead of pulling it onto the rocks. So when we build that setup, we're actually going to uh, make it out of two by 12s for the center section. And then we'll still do the two by sixes uh, for the, the, the bunks. So that'll be cool. And, uh, but yeah, we're super excited. The ski's finally getting close to being on the trailer and ready to go to the lake. <laughs> All right, so here's the final setup. And I wanted to talk about the trailer some since I get a lot of questions about our uh, use this use of the utility trailers for jet skis and what we found was the easy loop hubs which is the main concern with uh, using a utility trailer for watercraft purposes is the easy loop hubs on a utility trailer are exactly the same as a watercraft trailer so they've worked great for us for over 10 years now I'm um, not saying that you go out and do it, do it whatever you want, but this setup has worked great for us. And with the aluminum trailer setup, uh, not using the wood, not having a traditional utility trailer with the wood, the wood pot could potentially want to float. So with the aluminum trailer, it's uh, worked out great and they look super cool. Uh, this specific trailer is a Triton trailer with the part number right here it is a fit 1064 and we needed this bigger trailer for the four strokes as they are a little bit wider than the two strokes it's plenty wide for the four stroke setup and it looks really cool and then we went with the uws it's a actually considered an atv box but we wanted something that was uh, really short so it didn't interfere with our tailgate. The metal is pretty thick on it, doesn't want to flex, and I uh, can actually sit on top of it. 
And then in here we keep our uh, spare tools to work on the skis. Uh, obviously with this trailer set up, we'll be in the four stroke trailer. Uh, we don't have as many issues as we do with the two strokes, so it doesn't need as much tools in here. So we just got a bunch of, uh, you know, spare keys, glasses, and uh, some stuff to spray down the ski. And then in here we have spare rags and other goodies. The, but the UWS box is cool because it can lock. So whatever you do have in here can be locked up. And we just have U-bolts, kind of like we did with the rest of the trailer, attaching the box to the trailer. But yeah, the system is really cool. And actually I'm really digging the retractable buckles more and more now that we've tried them out. Um, they're super cool how they just automatically go back into the system there compared to what we've traditionally been doing with the regular ratchet setup and the pen. So it's kind of, kind of cool, a little different. And, uh, was really the best option that we found for the Superjet specifically. But yeah, the setup looks sweet. Especially with the new truck. Let's go ahead and get this back in the garage and get our two strokes out. All right, we got the two jet ski trailers in the garage. You guys can see. We got the wetsuits up, getting ready for riding season. It's almost here. But uh, tune, stay tuned for more mods on the new Super Jet and more stand up jet ski content. But uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.